Hello, this is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. Um, on this video, we are going to show you how to build a Precision T5610 uh, custom gaming system. Um, whether you're going to use your system for gaming or you know use it for engineering or you know CAD software, this video will also help you. It just shows you high clock speed components. Um, to really boost performance um, on a Precision T5610. Uh, if you haven't already, go to greenpcgamers.com for more content. Uh, you might want to pause this page. Um, I'll pause it for a second. So these are the specs that we're going to build. Um, we are going to do a single 8-core E5-2687 uh, WV2 processor. Um, and we like this one because it's high clock speed. It has eight cores. Uh, it's got four gigahertz max turbo frequency. All right, we're gonna do 16 gig of RAM. Um, for gaming, 16 gig is is normally sufficient. I mean, you could go higher if you'd like, you know, 24 or 32. It's not gonna hurt you. Um, in this particular configuration, we are going to do a 256 gig solid state drive, a two and a half inch drive, um, because the T5610 will not um, allow you to boot to an NVMe drive. Uh, but we are still going to install an NVMe drive. Um, it's a 500 gig Samsung. Um, it does require an adapter, as you'll see in the video. Uh, we're going to do a NVIDIA GTX 1080. Um, it's a very solid card. You know, you're going to be able to play almost every game at uh, high settings, uh, depending on how optimized it is. We also like that card because of the power, uh, the auxiliary power. It's set up perfectly for Precision T5610. Um, you don't need any adapters, it just plugs in easily. Um, standard DVD RW optical drive. Uh, we have an A25 watt power supply. Um, we, we, we like that based off of uh, the CPU and the graphics card. The graphics card they recommend um, at least a 650 watt power supply. Um, and we're going to run Windows 10 Pro 64 bit on it. So let's get on with the with the build. Um, as you can see here, we have our components. Um, uh, this is our workstation that we're going to work with. Turn the sound down here. Um, here's our uh, NVMe drive. Um, this is our adapter for our NVMe drive because the T5610 does not have an NVMe slot on the motherboard. So we have to use an adapter. There's our graphics card. 1080 super clocked. Uh, like EVGA because they have a good warranty. Okay, so we're going to pull out the side panel. Um, and at this point, we're kind of jumping around in this video. I already had the NVMe drive and the 1080 installed. So I'm going to show you how to install the processor first. Uh, we'll jump back and show how to install the other components. We do have to remove the optical drive cage. And as you can see, we're going to go with a single processor. The T5610 does support two processors. Um, but for what we are doing, a single 8-core is more than sufficient. If you do plan to stream with the same system, um, it's a good idea to, to possibly add that second processor. Um, and uh, that will really, really help with, with streaming. So, but I mean, typically you could, you could go with a single 8-core for streaming as well and gaming. Uh, here's our processor, set code SR19V, um, E5-2687WV2. And we will install that right into that processor slot. So be very careful when you do this. Make sure you line up the notches. As you can see on my first run, I, I did not have them lined up. So I'm flipping it around. Drop it right into place. Put your retention clips on. And make sure it's solid in there. Put the retention clips on. And then we will be ready to add our heat paste or thermal grease. So the, the retention clips, as you can see, I have a little trouble with one hand while holding a camera, but um, the bottom one goes in first and the top one will attach easily. All right, so now we got to put our thermal grease on. We use uh, thermal grease from Shinetsu Microsci. They make 
it's really good stuff. I, I prefer it to Arctic Shield or some of the other brands, especially if you ever have to clean the processor later. It's much easier to clean off, and it works really, really well. So we'll drop a dab on there right in the center. And so what will happen is when we put the heat sink on, the system actually heats up. That thermal grease will evenly spread across the processor and keep it nice and cool. So at this point, we have to put our heat sink on. You can see the part number there. Uh, this heat sink has a fan built into it as well. So when you install it, you do have to make sure that you plug that fan. In. And if you forget, the system will tell you in post that you, you know, the the, th uh, the processor fan for CPU one is unplugged. So as you can see, plugs in right there. Okay, we got that installed. Uh, there are four screws that you must. Um, screw down for this heat sink. Um, I'm not going to do it in this video, but I'm going to point them all out for you. So, um, yeah, make sure you screw those in before you um, before you move on. So, and then you throw that optical drive cage cover back on. So, all right. So now at this point, we're going to show you how to do the memory. Pull the side panel off again. We've already got our processor installed. Other components. So, because we have one processor installed, we can only use four of the slots. If you install the secondary processor, then it'll open uh, open you up to all eight slots. But in this case, we're going to do four. Uh, we have four four gig uh, four, uh, PC3 14900R modules, that, so they'll clock out at 1866 megahertz with that processor. So, what we'll do is we will just go in and shimmy those in uh, you get one side in and then you can click both sides easy enough to do with one hand so those are ddr3 modules um, you could easily do four eight gig modules um, these systems support ddr3 so uh, keep an eye out you'll see a lot of times that people install 12800r modules in these systems but in this case we want to stick with 14900r um, to get that max max clock speed with our processor it all helps when, it, when you're loading into really large games or if you're using it for uh, engineering you know it's, it's good to have the fastest clock speed components that you can get all right so we have one more memory module to install and then we'll move on so it's always nice to keep both clips open when you're installing the modules I'm having a little trouble because I am using one hand so you just drop it right in there click one side move to the other side click that in boom there we go all right, put our optical drive cover back in. All right, so next. What is next? Next, we're gonna do the NVMe. Okay, so like I said, the T5610 does not support booting to an NVMe drive, um, but, and it also does not have a slot on the motherboard. So we have the adapter on the left, we have our NVMe drive on the right. Um, Going to show you how to pop that NVMe drive right inside that adapter. It's very similar to installing a memory module, actually even easier. So you just push that right in there, and it still sits up. And you'll use the screw to actually pull it right down to the planar board. So you just uh, tighten that down. And at that point, you're you're ready to install the card. So that's how it looks. Looks very, very, you know, as good as it can look for it, having to use an adapter card. So um, we'll install that in the slot here. Um, and as we're doing that, um, so we'll, we'll keep all of our, our gaming libraries on the NVMe drive. Um, because we can't boot to it, we'll still have to use a regular conventional solid state drive, a regular SATA one. Um, but we'll, we're going to install this, and we're going to install any sort of gaming library, whether you're using Steam or Epic or, um, you know, any 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 gaming library. Make sure you save it to the NVMe drive because that's going to get you the faster boot times, um, or not boot times, but uh, faster opening speeds. Um, you can also uh, use the same concept for 
Um, if you're using engineering software, if you have any big files that you want to open up, save all those files um, onto the NVMe drive because you can open them right from there. All right, so this is the, the big bad GTX 1080 card. And so, yeah, if you want to take a look, like I said, I like to use EVGA because their warranty is awesome. And the cards stay fairly cool. Uh, their pricing is also uh, decent. Um, so here's our card after it's unboxed. Um, this card has two fans. Um, one thing that I noticed when I started using the card is it it doesn't actually, the fans don't actually spin unless I'm playing games or, or actually uh, using the GPU. So they'll, they'll, I mean, it'll stay cool just for normal tasks with the heat spreaders that are on it. So this card's fairly heavy, so you have to be gentle when you install it. Um, it does take up two, uh, two PCI blank slots. Um, so basically, you, you just drop it in and make sure it lines up. Once it lines up, take a look at your PCI, uh, the end where it locks in. Make sure the screws are good. That one looks good. And then you just push it right in. It's flush. It's installed. Um, this one has a single 8-pin connection. Um, now... Uh, EVGA sends this adapter with the card, which is perfect for the T5610. So all you do is install that right there. And then I'm not going to do it on video because this, they're locked in and I only have one hand. But there's two six pins. So it's, it, it, uh, and that's standard on an 825 watt power supply T5610. So what you do is just pull those out um, and connect them right to that adapter. Um, and it'll look like so. Uh, and then the system will not hold on, uh, on on boot, telling you that you have you don't have everything installed properly. Okay, so um, here's our NVMe drive, uh, our GTX 1080 installed. There's our auxiliary power. Um, I'm not showing the install of the regular SATA 256 gig SSD, but it, it is installed in the final install. Um, we showed our memory. Um, that's what it looks like when it's finished. Um, you can see the back of the chassis, 825 watt power supply, very important. Um, we've got our NVMe, got our graphics card. Uh, the system has USB 3.0 slots if you want to do VR, um, gigabit network, uh, even has the old PS2 ports. So um, thanks a lot for watching this video. Um, and if you want to support me or you have additional questions, I do stream on Twitch most nights uh, at 9 central time. Um, so feel free to drop in there um, and ask any other questions that you may have. Also, if you haven't already, um, go to greenpcgamers.com. We have a ton of content for upgrading um, CAD engineering workstations, and we're constantly adding new content. Um, for example, this system was added. This will take you through, depending on budget, um, different components to upgrade your Precision T5610. So we go through processors, memory, um, you know, hard drives, graphics cards. Uh, we keep sample configurations, and we also add other content um, onto our YouTube pages for how to install individual components. Um, so thanks a lot for watching the video, and uh, please subscribe if you like what you're seeing.